What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video and I'm sure a lot of people are looking at the title of this and seeing the thumbnail and thinking this man is crazy but I'm surely I'm not the only one thinking this. Should the Maple Leafs try to acquire a goaltender at the trade deadline? Now I feel like this would be a last resort move but still very possible considering the play of Jack Campbell and Peter Morazic as of late. But before I get any further, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you're new here. Tons of Leafs content, news and rumors, trade stuff, literally everything. You can go watch other videos on the channel. Thank you to all of the new subscribers. Thank you to all the previous ones. But again, it really does help me liking this video and subscribing. Um, it's completely free. So um, yeah, I appreciate you guys as always. But let's let's get into the reason why I'm making this because there's no specific rumor although there have been a couple like reporters who have some in say listen the Leafs maybe should consider this maybe they've they've gotten a little bit of a hint from other people that they might be considering it but it would be wrong of Kyle Dubas to not think of the possibility of getting another goaltender we've seen him tinker a little bit and think about the fact that maybe he might want to trade Peter Morazic, right? So is there an opportunity for the Leafs to send Peter Morazic in a trade to someone else and acquire back a goaltender while obviously giving up additional assets? It's very possible. But the first thing I wanted to say is you're going to see the, th the thumbnail and see Mark andre Fleury in the thumbnail. I think if the Leafs were to acquire a goaltender... That would be the guy that I would want them to go after. Now, again, I'm not starting a rumor. Um, I have no inside source, nothing like that. But this is more of a discussion with you guys. I'm not giving up on Jack Campbell, and I'm not giving up on Peter Morazic. Campbell's been incredible. He's an all-star. But if there's an opportunity to trade Morazic, keep Campbell, and acquire another goaltender, maybe this is something that the Leafs should consider, especially if they are able to use all that cap space that they have with Jake Muzzin going on LTIR, they could acquire a cheaper defenseman like a Mark Pissick or, you know, somebody else that's cheap who can play 20, 22 minutes a night and also acquire a goaltender. So you're focusing solely on the defense because we've seen again against the Detroit Red Wings almost a tire fire happen when they were up like 7-3 and all of a sudden the game was in reach. That can't happen. They scored 10 goals. It ended up being 10-7. That can't happen. The Leafs need to have... Like, that game should have been like 10-3. There was a lot of very weak goals. And unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of very weak goals going in on Campbell and Mrazek. So, $1.6 million cap hit for Campbell, obviously, this season. And he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Now, you know, myself and other people were talking about how his numbers we're going to get him to a big contract because the season previous, you know, when he came in with Toronto, like he's had really, really good numbers, even in the playoffs, 1.81934 save percentage with the Leafs. Playoffs in the AHL, I mean, he had a pretty good one there with the uh, Ontario Reign, but it was looking more and more like Campbell was going to get this massive contract, like five, six million dollar territory um, for a contract. And now he's kind of slowly playing his way out of having that type of that type of contract. Now, the reason I'm saying that is if you look over his game logs here on Hockey Reference, look at the goals against the save percentage. Um, like it's just the numbers don't look too good. So four goals against, four goals against, one, zero, two. Okay, good stretch of three games. Then five, then three, then five, then five, then three, then three. Three is not too bad, but when you're mixing in fives with all those games, it starts to look bad. Three, three, one. Okay, so a good game. Then right back to five. Two and one. Okay, couple good games. But then five, four, and five. You want your goalie to not allow more than probably three goals a game. And if you're a team that can't score, even that's too much. But the Leafs can score. So three goals is probably not too bad on a few off games. But it's the consistency of him allowing three plus goals in a ton of games. It's between three and five goals in at least half of those games. It's like 
like okay let's let's look so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seven there's 18 games listed there so one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 11 12 so 12 out of 18 games he's allowing more than three goals that's that's really not good let's be honest here and we're not going to look into Mrazek's numbers because he's been you know injured and whatever else so his numbers aren't very good but when he has been playing they haven't always been good either so there's no point we're just they're both not playing that well and again, I'm not going to sit here and rant about Campbell not being good and the fact that they should get rid of him. No, that's that's completely against what I'm trying to say here. The Leafs are probably going to get Campbell at a cheaper number. And if I'm Kyle Dubas at the deadline, maybe you're thinking, hey, man, listen, this is what we want to offer you before we get into the offseason. Um, this is this is our offer and come in pretty low. I mean, they might have to come in a lot lower than what they were expecting. This might be the time, but again, you know, he could have a really good rest of the season and the Leafs will have to pay a little bit more. And I think all Leaf fans would be happy if he had a really good rest of the season and that that's it. They, they just pay him out for a great season. But what if the Leafs contacted about Mark andre Fleury? Now, again, guys, this isn't some NHL 22 fantasy crap that I'm trying to start here. Marc-Andre Fleury is probably going to be available. The Blackhawks aren't that good of a team. $7 million cap hit. He's an unrestricted free agent after this season. He does have the modified no trade clause, but let's not forget that he was almost not going to play for the Chicago Blackhawks. Like there was a lot of, there was a lot of sour, you know, like there was a lot of sourness that went on with him leaving Vegas to go to Chicago. And it didn't seem like he was going to play. So, why would Chicago, first of all, keep him around knowing that he's more than likely leaving in the offseason and give him a shot to win? Because if Fleury got traded and won a cup, like not just saying Toronto, but it's like he could probably call it a career at that point. So he's 37 years old, but Fleury still puts up really, really good numbers and he's a playoff performer. Like his numbers in the playoffs have been really good. Obviously, his last really bad one, I would say, um, was the 15-16 season. Um, but again, like look at 15 games in 16-17, 20 in 17-18, um, 7, 4, um, 16. Like the guy can play a ton of games. And if you go into the playoffs with a Campbell, you know, um, flurry split, you're probably starting flurry in those games, but at least you have Campbell there as well. So 38 games played this year, 2.80912. So the goals against average, not the greatest. Save percentage, not mind-blowing numbers. But he's he's Mark Andre Flurry. He's a clutch performer. And if the Leafs can upgrade their blue line a little bit, because Chicago's been terrible and he's putting up those numbers. So if they can, you know, add a little bit to that blue line and get a guy like Flurry. This team might be insane going into the playoffs. Like, that's what I would do. Get a Mark Pissick style defenseman. You can trade off Hall and Mrazek in deals and and hopefully get Flurry. I mean, that's just what I would do. And people are going to say, oh, you know, Hall doesn't have value. You know, Hall has value. He can fetch you a late round pick at least. He probably will get you a third or a fourth. Maybe, maybe we're 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 overshooting a little bit, but I would think he gets you a fourth. Like the guy has been good enough to get you a third or fourth round pick. And and uh, I've heard other um, reporters talk about this before. He doesn't have negative trade value. He has he has decent trade value. You're not going to get great stuff for him. You're just going to get what you would expect. You know what I mean? Um, he still plays twenty plus minutes a night against tough competition. Uh, he just hasn't been playing that well this year and that's fine but if you need to get rid of some money you you trade Mrazek and Hall and you try to make a trade with with the Chicago Blackhawks now I do briefly want to bring up another name that's been discussed on a bunch of different occasions and that's Yaroslav Halak at that 1.5 million dollar cap hit he does have the no move clause but I'm not really sure why people are so fascinated with bringing him in. Um, he hasn't really had the best season. I know Vancouver hasn't either. Um, but even last year with Boston in 19 games, he wasn't really that sharp. Um, the last time he was 
playing really well was when he got more starts, 31 um, in the 1920 season. But if you bring in a guy like Halak, he's he's the backup. Like, there's no question. You're not bringing him in to take on a ton of starts, um, and, and that's your guy. If you bring in a flurry, he becomes the the number one guy, and you and you give Campbell a few games here and there. Now, some people might say, well, would Campbell want that well guess what if if you want if you don't want somebody to come in and take your job then you have to win games you have to play better and it hasn't just been a stretch of a few games Campbell's had some some really bad games over that stretch of 18 games where I said he's had like 12 pretty bad ones um so we'll have to see what they do here but um with money in and money out the Leafs could make this happen especially with that that newfound cap space with Jake Muzzin, um, because I know the Leafs are saying right now, oh, you know, if he's healthy, he'll play. The reason they got so close to the cap was because they they needed to be able to, when they put him on LTIR, get that maximum cap space just in case. No, they're, they've made calls on JT Miller. They've made other calls according to sources out there. You don't make those calls if you don't think you can make those trades. So I, I think that they they know that they're open for business. And uh, man, honestly, I think a trade like this would, would benefit the Leafs a ton. So let me know what you guys think. Again, this was just more of a uh, like trying to let you guys in on a, what my thought process is. Um, and if you agree with them possibly going after um, another goaltender. So let me know what you guys think. Um, if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. I do love and appreciate you guys as always. Um, if you guys are watching this before the game, um, go Leafs go. And if you're not, then, uh, make sure to subscribe. Peace.